Alright guys, it's me again. I'm back with another video. It's been a while. I've uh, been caught up with some things. So today, I'm just, I made a simple dress really quickly and uh, put it in here uh, using uh, Marvelous Designer and Adobe Substance Painter. So, let's get started. I'm going to explain to you all how to uh, configure your cloth settings. So first we're going to write we're going to make sure section selection is enabled. So click that. If you don't have the clothing window, go over here, check this. It'll come out in a window like this. What you're going to do is you're just going to drag it over here. That's what I did. Makes it easier. Go to activate cloth paint with oh I'm getting ahead of myself. So first off, what you're going to do is you have to make a uh, you have to make clothing data, and then you have to apply it to it. So first, we're going to create clothing data. We're going to call this dress. We're going to create it. We're going to right click it, apply the dress clothing data. This will take a a second or two. After it's done, select this and go to activate clothing paint, cloth paint and uh, I am on the mesh by the way so after you've done this we're just going to go to gradient we're going to set this 0 to 30 is uh, seems to work for me uh, just click anywhere on the dress up near the mid or top section then hold down control and select a, a bottom point and then press enter it'll create the gradient for you go back to brush set the paint value to zero and then uh, also what I did is I changed my radius to five on this if you didn't see that earlier and you're gonna go all around the the upper part of it make sure that's all pink and we're gonna go all the way around this and actually it might actually make more sense if we set this to like 20 nah yeah 20 20 is fine and just do all of this and then we're going to go to smooth we're going to set this to a value of about 0.8 and smooth it until it gets up there around that point if you want some of this to be higher you can turn your brush down and you can manually oops you can manually smooth it like that that'll probably probably be good we'll see so after you've done that, deactivate it. See what it looks like. You'll probably have issues with clipping. That's all right, we'll fix it. And there it is. Okay, it doesn't look like we're having any clipping issues. It does look a little funny right there, but that's all right. What you could do is you could just go back into paint mode and with a soft brush maybe about 15 you could just lightly paint that right there and that right there and then go back to smooth and smooth it one more time. Make sure it didn't mess up the back too much that looks fine we'll deactivate this and 
and see what it looks like. That looks better. You can do the same thing for the front part right here if you need to. So we'll do the same thing here. And do that. And smooth it. Might need to redo this whole thing like how we did it. So I might use 10 this time. And try not to undo what I did right here. And then I will go back to smooth and smooth it once and that should be fine. Now we'll undo this. And that looks better. And still no clipping. Oh wait, there's some clipping right there. So we're going to fix that. You can go to, uh, actually, let's fix it using the cloth settings. So go down to clothing and down here at the bottom where you see collision thickness you can try turning that up to two and that what that does what I did just then was the spacing between the physics asset and the cloth uh, that's it's gonna add uh, extra spacing between the physics uh, or yeah between the physics collision and the cloth so that that's your physics uh, collision right there that's what it treats as physics collision is your uh, physics asset so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this resolver up because I, I think it's it tends to make it look better uh, and this resolver is just a, a frequency of the position solver lower values will lead to stretchiness bouncier cloth so that's what that that does that'll make it stiffer and the stiffness frequency frequency for stiffness calculations lower values will degrade stiffness of constraints so if you turn this down it'll uh, loosen uh, the constraints between those collision physics and let me show you what that looks like so if you go to character go to clothing go to self collision radii and then go to activate and deactivate cloth paint that you should see it and just give that a second oh well there I missed something you have to to see this you have to turn on self collision radii that does have a small performance impact on it and we'll just turn the self collision uh, stiffness up to one and if you didn't catch that you see how it looks right there and that's uh, for the self collision stiffness but we'll probably just leave that at zero and then deactivate and activate or activate and deactivate cloth paint and it should do it this time okay it's kind of hit or miss for me on this let me see if uh, doing that will uh, and I'm not real sure what causes this but sometimes it doesn't want to show us the uh, there it goes so apparently you have to have self collision stiffness turned on in order for it to be activated and then you have to activate and deactivate your cloth paint so you have to have at least self collision stiffness turned on I'm not sure about self collision radi radius but I'm assuming so since without any radius you won't be able to see it so that's probably okay uh, what you want to try to do is avoid any kind of uh, overlapping like you see here uh, but if there's a little bit of overlapping I don't think it's too much of a big deal you could turn it down to about 0.9 uh, or even 0.5 
No, that's too small. We'll turn it down to 0.8, and that should be fine. So that should re greatly reduce the overlapping that you get. Now, obviously that's self collision and that's talking about uh, these little orbs you see here. So the spheres, or orbs, whatever you want to call them, uh, when it is what the physics are calculated based on. So when you see the self collision radius, uh, that's the size of those orbs, and this is the stiffness of those orbs. Uh, which uh, stiffness of the spring force that will resolve self collision so that's just that's like how stiff the spring force is so if you can imagine a spring and and one's real loose uh, so it's so it's compressed easier and the other one uh, is harder to compress down then that's basically I believe what they're talking about here and a lower one will will make it looser and a, high, a higher one will make it stiffer. So one is normally okay for me. Sometimes you might want a, a self collision radius larger than this. It depends on uh, how detailed your mesh is. So down here on the friction, that's basically like how much friction it has when it rubs up against uh, another sphere. So Sometimes turning that up to 0.5 will uh, make it look better uh, during uh, animation. It, it, like how it moves during the animation. So right here, this is linear drag and angular drag. Most of the time you'll see that uh, the pre-made cloth settings on other assets are set to zero. That has to do with uh, the wind. like. Uh, and down here on tether stiffness, uh, that can be, or tether limit, I should say, that's how far uh, they can separate. And if you have issues where you have like a sleeve or a jacket on her, and uh, so if this thing had sleeves and you had issues with uh, parts of the dress attaching itself to the sleeve, you would use the tether limit to fix that. And normally you don't have to turn the tethering limit up above 30. So uh, about a, a value of like 20 to 30 will normally fix those issues where it's sticking to the sleeves. Uh, turning tether stiffness up too also has an effect on stuff like this, I believe. So let's see if I turn this up to 15. It doesn't seem to have an effect because that's stiffness, right? I'm uh, still thinking of limit here. So when you turn the the limit up, it actually uh, it actually loosens it, but that will fix some issues that you have. It also, I, I believe, make it bouncier because it can separate farther. So you can also turn it down, and if you do you might get stuff like this. Uh, so keep that in mind. Even uh, 0.9 has a, uh, an effect on it. So we might do something like 1.1 and we could turn the stiffness up but you probably won't see its effect unless uh, you turn it down way far like that or it's, or it's being animated so keep that in mind as well anim drive spring stiffness that's if you're using an anim drive I'm not familiar with that so I'm not going to go into it wind drag and lift that's pretty self explanatory uh, the vertical constraints horizontal constraints bend constraints and shear constraints all have an effect on how these particle spheres move uh, and how stiff they are, how stretchy they're going to be. I normally don't mess with those, but you can. Uh, it, it can have uh, an effect on how the cloth looks during simulations. If you need to preview it, you can go over here and select an animation to see what it looks like.
and honestly I do not know I do not know how to turn that off so but you see there's something here that's I don't know and this is another reason why it's good to uh, look into this because you can get uh, issues like this with your cloth where when it's simulating physics it may be colliding with your physics but I don't see any physics asset right there that's colliding with it so it may be that you just need to adjust the uh, if you it, oh here you go if you need to remove that animation that preview animation you can do that so we're gonna go over here to character we're going to go to clothing and self collision radii we're gonna turn that off and this right here is where it was doing that at and I see why it's doing that now remember I added I increased it right here but I left a space right here so it's it has less physics right here more physics right here and more physics around it and that's the reason why it's doing this so when you're adjusting that stuff you need to be mindful of that and I believe we used a value of 15 so we're just gonna fill that in and that should fix it and we should probably do the same right here on the sides and right here and right here and then we're going to go to smooth and smooth it twice and it did mess with this up here a little bit so maybe we'll go back to the brush turn the value back down to zero and go around the edge you don't have to be too shy with with this just make sure that you don't overlap with the parts that you don't want it to affect greatly and then what I'll do is I'll go back down to smooth and I'll smooth it once maybe twice more let's undo that last one And what's happening here is it's making the scene brighter. You can go under post processing right here to fix that. And turn post processing off. That's a, a neat trick too. It, uh, you might want to keep in mind. You can also just go under this and adjust the brightness of this or the intensity of it and it only affects this uh, scene right here where you're optimizing this now back over here your dampening force uh, is that obviously it's the dampening of the particle motion per uh, axis and that is basically how quickly it will stop moving so if you have uh, I might have it backwards, but if you have a high value, I think it'll stop it faster. The cloth will stop bouncing around faster. If you have a lower value, uh, I believe it will stop. It'll, it'll bounce around longer after a movement. The gravity scale, you can turn the gravity up on your cloth if you want it to have a heavier feel to it. Or you could even turn it down so it has no gravity. Also, I do believe you can uh, you can tweak these values in real time through your blueprint. So keep that in mind. I think this is pretty much it. So let's uh, go ahead and test it out here and see how it looks. So obviously we have some weird stuff going on here. It looks like when I imported my mesh it, there was a little piece that got missed somewhere. And that's probably what's causing a lot of that. 
So what we'll do is we'll come back in here and see if this thing has any physics on it. And when I go into physics mode, it actually doesn't even show up. So I have no idea what that's coming from. Let's see. This uh, min and max uh, view value is uh, the minimum value that represents the min value represents uh, white and the max value represents black. So if you turn the black value up, you'll and I might have that backwards. So let's say if I turn this up to 50. Yeah, I think the minimum value stands for uh, black and the max value stands for white. So if you want a wider range of gradient, then you would turn this up. But just know that it's going to affect everything cloth physics wise. It's This isn't just for the one that you have selected. Turning this up turns it up for everything. So that looks a little bit better. We have some uh, clipping through here, right here, uh, and the front of it still looks a little funny. Let's see. Not so much when it's moving around, but when it's sitting still, it kind of looks funny. You could adjust that a bit. Now, if you want it to not look like that, let's see. <clears throat> Let me get out of cloth painting mode. So it looks fine in here. See, this is one of the weird things about Unreal's uh, cloth physics system is it might look fine in here, but when you go into the viewport, it looks different. So that's why it's normally good to have to uh, try try this stuff out these animations and try to see how it's messed up and tweak your cloth settings accordingly so I might go into a walk and what we might do is we might want to make it stiffer Hmm. Let's try this. What's going on here? Huh. That's interesting. It bugs out like that sometimes. Their uh, cloth system isn't 100% perfect. You can make it more accurate if you go to accurate. And as you can see here, it use use updated use updated wind calculation for NV cloth base solved, taking into account drag and lift. This will require those properties to be correctly set in the clothing configuration. But we're going to use legacy. Accuracy would probably not be something you would use in a game. And you can see how having it set to 3 is just a little bit too much there. Even having it set to Uh, two may not be desirable.
so what we will do is try turning this down a little bit and I probably shouldn't have done that that normally takes a, a, a good minute to uh, complete I've been avoiding uh, saving it for that reason let's see what it looks like So we'll go back in here and we'll turn our radius, our collision radius up to about two. And turn down, let's see the stiffness. And we will see how that looks. We'll see how it looks in motion. Stuff like this has to be adjusted on a base to base. Uh, if you go to activate cloth paint, you can adjust the smoothness of this and the and this as well as I showed you before. Stuff like that is kind of hard to avoid. If you see stretching like that, it's normally because the cloth is has too much physics at the end of it, and it needs to be uh, redone. So if you have stuff like that, you would want to go back in here, and you would want to make that uh, you would want to make that darker than what it is. So you maybe use a different uh, value on it. I'm not going to do that. I think this pretty much sums it up. Uh, if you have issues like that, what I showed you just there, I think, let's see, we can turn up the tether limit. I believe that will help. Let's deactivate this. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, so it helped a little bit. As far as self collision, you'll have to tweak these self collision values to try to get what you're wanting so that it's not colliding with, with itself. See if you turn that up too high and you have your self collision too big then it's going to do that it's a, a balance you have to try to uh, find here you could even try turning your friction up but it probably shouldn't be a, a one just to let you know and I think turning it that friction up to a one may made it might have made it a little worse but it's looking a little better now the let's see we'll just turn that back down to point one and see how what kind of a difference that makes in the way the cloth moves so it's not even really noticeable but if you're looking closely you'll be able to tell that there's a slight difference in the way the cloth rubs up against itself But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much more detail on that. Uh, like I said, uh, stuff like that 
this is probably caused by the fact that I did a really quick job on this just to get a dress so that I could get it imported and show you all this. So if you would just ignore that issue at the bottom of the dress. Uh, when you're doing dresses in Marvelous Designer, you'll get bugs like that. You have to learn how to, like, what you can and can't do. For example, this uh, dress, I didn't make it. Uh, I just modified it. So you can see this dress actually has two layers. I took the second layer off because inside of Unreal, when you're doing physics, it's going to cause issues. Also, if you have a seam around the bottom of the dress like this, it needs to be on the same material uh, as this as the other parts so all of this down here would need to be part of one material I'm not gonna go into that right now but maybe later I'll do another video on that I think I'm gonna do an entire course of from beginning to end for uh, marvelous designer to character creator uh, to unreal and I'm gonna do a full episode where it goes into physics and everything and I'm gonna put it into a playlist and I hope this helped you guys, and I'm going to go close this right now because I'm, I've already made this video too long.